So I'm trying to process all of what's going on out there in the United States. And I'm thinking back when I was in the conspiracy world and all of the warnings. And then I had to do a reset on myself and let all of the conspiracy stuff go and then start from scratch and learn about my society from my own experiences through the Jilly Juice and seeing the evidence that's out there. And again, I'm like remembering what caused me to be in the conspiracy world to begin with was the fact that we had uh, Enron and WorldCom or the, mold, the, the what is it the, um, the mortgage crisis and that Obama was in office and I'm like, how did this mortgage crisis happen? The fall of that whole you know real estate industry and the mortgage stuff and the loans and all of that. And I'm like, what was Obama doing during that time? What was he, where was his watchdogs? How did he, how did he let this happen? And so that's what got me into the conspiracy world because I'm like, what the hell, Obama? And then I remember then Obama was all about race as well. So anytime you reference a race as a differentiation point, you are in fact creating racism. You are separating the masses. And that's what Obama's whole platform was, was all about race, allowing the fall of society around the mortgage crisis. And I'm like, okay, the leadership. So the leadership is allowing this stuff to happen. The outcome is the intention, da, 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 da. Okay, holy crap. And so now I'm looking at what's going on. And I'm seeing... And I did a lot of research on Obama too, as you know, when he was part of the um, the 1960s Marxist movement. So there is definitely some history with Obama. <coughs> and now we have Trump, who's trying his best to figure some stuff out. Yes, he's part of the establishment. He has a lot of money. Yes. Um, to what extent is he a part of everything? I have no idea. All I can see is he's saying some great words, but he's not getting a lot of support from Congress as well as the governors and even the judges because the judges are split down the middle. And so we have this organization called Antifa. They've been around for a long time. They are very militant and they come from all walks of life, races, creed, whatever. And you really can't tell who they are. They wear masks. They, you know, they, they, you don't know who these Antifas are. And then you have victims in our society who don't believe themselves to be equal. They're flailing about like a fish that has been injured in the water. And like when I was watching some Fox News and they're saying, yeah, you know, when you have a mass gathering of protests, it's like watching a fish in the water flailing about and then the predators, the sharks, start circling in. Hey, Rob. And so then they hijack that movement, that rally, and turn it into something that it was not intended to be. And so you have like three things going. You have the Black Lives Matter, you have Antifa, and you have peaceful protesters that think of themselves as a victim because they don't see themselves as equal. And the reason why is because they have stuck to their truths. They don't look at facts. Who is they? They Those that don't see themselves as equal, that always continuously believe themselves to be a victim. And it could be... Anybody that feels that there is, they are fighting against some social issue. And so I'm seeing so many victims out there that don't stick to facts that, I mean, I studied statistics in college and statistics are used to drive a reality, to drive a, a, a perception. And then 
This is how you mind control a population is by uh, creating and twisting facts to then create a truth. And so I'm seeing now the bigger picture because I wanted to give Obama the benefit of the doubt. Some of you love Obama. That's fine. But he was all about race. Just so you know, he was all about race. And when you put so much focus on your race, you will have racism. That's a fact. When you stop focusing on race, you won't have racism. You stop focusing on specific body parts, people won't be mentioning and noticing those specific body parts. What you put out there is what people are going to respond to. And so, yeah, the, the Antifa, and, the, and the, they are trying, they're like the New World Order, I guess. But maybe this is where we're supposed to be. And I guess they're supposed to have bloodshed. It's only going to be the strong. They're going to survive. They're going to make everybody, try to make everybody egalitarian. Okay. Um, it's not going to be a capitalist society, 100%. Of course, it's not going to be, well, socialism, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know what the outcome, what the actual goal of Antifa is. I mean, they, they want to legislate morals and say they want equality, but I don't know how you... Uh, force people to be equal if they don't even consider themselves to be equal and then they will mischaracterize anybody's actions if they don't act in a specific way oh god you're racist or oh god you're not treating me equally and make these kind of accusations so i don't know what the actual goal of antifa is but they are definitely an extremist organization that will find different social issues and use them as a way to to drive their own narrative and then go in and take over and terrorize. And so you're seeing it in New York City. You're seeing it in New York City where the police now have to stand down. They're standing down because they're not going to risk their police force on some rioters, these five gangs and the five bureaus that are actually taking items from a store. And then they have, uh, th then they they ha they have these th these organized cells that will go and occupy the the police over here while they're going and 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 terrorizing over there. And then you're seeing things on the internet, which hey, look, I mean, when you have bricks and you have rocks and you have Molotov cocktails, easily accessible to people in specific areas and they're finding bricks in areas like where the hell do these bricks come from then you start seeing that there is definitely an organization going on and one very terrorist organization is actually hijacking the black lives matter movement they're hijacking the peaceful protesters to where you don't even know that you can't even tell the difference anymore who is what because they're all now being rolled into a ball and so at this point you need to stay home because if you go out there and put yourself on the battlefield, you're going to be mischaracterized. The way to get your point across is not to blame, is not to go out there and protest from a lower, from a, from a very um, baser, lower instinct, but is to write out exactly what, I mean, I don't even know how to say it, because people can write how they, how it's everybody else's fault, how it's this person's fault and that person's fault. Oh, he wasn't treated right. Oh yeah, the statistics say that you know, in, in a community that is 17% black and 70% white or whatever, and then the black are 250% more arrested than, I mean, you could have 90% of a 17% minority commit a bunch of crimes. And, it, and, and you have, you know, um, and so that's how you could look at uh, how statistics can be driven to drive a narrative. And so now it comes down to personal accountability. Do you value yourself? Are you only going to reference yourself by the color of your skin and then assume everybody, whoever it is out there, is coming from that perception? Yeah, I know there are bad cops. There are there are antifas that, and there are political organizations that will use people's weaknesses to make them think that it is actually happening. And then use you as a pawn in a bigger picture that you have no idea what's going on. I mean, when you're paying, when, when they're paying protesters 
regardless of, of race, regardless of political background. And they're like, hey, you want to protest in this rally and we'll pay you $200 and you go throw a rock and you do this. Or we're going to have something like what happened with, with that guy, you know, Chauvin, who could be some who could be some organized person, part of a bigger organization, who then carries out a public execution knowing exactly how people are going to react. And this is where the first shot is fired. That's the first shot that was fired was that, that specific incident over there in Minneapolis. And then you see then everything, the fallout from that. And then now you don't even know who or what is anymore. You hear about Antifa from Fox News and then you go look at CNN and they're like, oh yeah, we have the sheriff who's showboating in one town said, I'm going to march with you all. We don't like police brutality. And then you have another sheriff over here that's part of, or, 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 or that is, that is not, you know, for, that does not for police brutality too, but he has people that are, that, that, that are destroying his, his community and won't allow any kind of peaceful or, I mean, or that person that's, that's saying that, you know, that he's, a, or that, 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 that sheriff that is showboating and saying how he's walking in, in, in solidarity with the people. He could be very well, in fact, part of an organization that wants to make you think that, oh, we're trying, we're, we're in solidarity while another over here has to be painted as a bad guy. I mean, I'm telling you, this is some pretty organized stuff. And it's not going to get any better until some kind of outcome. I don't know what the goal is. That's, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Is what is the damn goal of Antifa? What is their goal? How many people have to die for them to reach their goal? That's what I'm concerned about. But the only way for us to kind of sort of get that, get away from whatever their goal is, is that you have to take responsibility and stop blaming someone for whatever your position in life. Stop saying that it's your skin color is what causes everything in your, in your world. You have to stop refer, reference yourself as, as, as your skin color, as your ethnicity. Stop propagating and promoting people that are all about race. No matter what side, whether they're for you or against you, if they differentiate and say, oh, I'm a white person or I'm a black man or I'm a I'm an Asian woman and you promote that and you like that someone references you as a race when you are actually a human being. When you reference yourself as a race, you have created racism in your world and you've asked people to refer to you as your race. Stop diminishing your power by only referencing your race as if that was the only thing that you contribute to this world. Some of you don't even know the power that you have as far as your potential because you've diminished yourself by the color of your skin. And that is what's wrong. And that's what you have allowed this Antifa to ride on those coattails. And you've given them a space to go and destroy your community to where you can't even go to a store and buy the things that you want and have the job that you want because you've allowed someone to hijack your, your complaint because you never took responsibility of how you wanted to be perceived. You know, equality is in the mind. It is not something out there. Equality is based upon facts. Facts are universally driven. Facts are something that everybody can experience universally. Facts is a definition. But when you talk about truth, the truth, the truther community, they're a bunch of freaking perceived, misguided, easily brainwashed community I've ever freaking seen. And I believe me, I was part of the truth or community and it's not the truth. It's somebody's truth, but it's not a fact. And there's a difference between truth and fact and people get them mixed up and they mix and say, oh yeah, the fact is the truth and the truth is a fact. And no, it's not. They're completely diametrically opposed. The fact is you are black. You have black skin. That's a fact. But how people treat you is not based upon that. It's based upon their own imbalances and they have no way to articulate because they're not that highly evolved. 
anyone that says, yeah, it's your race that I hate and or your assumption of that. You are actually speaking you you're you're not very articulate yourself if you assume people don't like you from your race and then someone that doesn't like you for your race and they say that they're not very articulate and very connected with their own body mind and spirit because every single visceral gut reaction every single visceral gut reaction comes from an imbalance every single one and most people do not know how to articulate why they feel the way they do about somebody they know they have this gut reaction, but they have no idea how to characterize it. So the lowest hanging fruit is what? The color of your skin, sexual orientation, the color of your hair, and your ethnicity. Because that is the most superficial, shallow way to explain why you feel the way you do. It's not the behaviors that you know how to articulate because you can't, you feel an energy. A person could be walking down the street doing nothing and you have this gut reaction. And not because of the color of skin, it's because you may... You may feel the energy. You may be thinking that you're acting one way and someone's going to perceive you and it's their own issue. And then this is how truths get created. Not facts, but truths and perceptions and propaganda and then brainwashing. And then you have someone like Antifa, Antifa, that will go and hijack whatever issue you have and take it and take and spin it. And then now you won't know why the hell you're fighting. And then you're seeing that. Like, you know, there's a video I posted yesterday where uh, a, a white lady was writing, you know, Black Lives Matter is down with white supremacy. And these 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 young black, you know, young um, protesting black girls are like, oh, my God, stop doing that. You're trying. You're, they're going to blame it on us. It's like f people need to fight their own battles. I'm not discounting people's perceptions of how people treat them. But that and that is your battle and you will fight your battle. But what gets me is why these people who are not even of your group are fighting your battles as if they had some kind of skin in that game. They have no skin in that game because when it comes down to it, they could give a shit about those people. Those people, they can give a shit about really their community. They say they, they're all about that, but they've created racism in their own community. They've created it. Because they're so focused on race. They're so focused on, 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 on watching my own family. My own family say, oh yeah, we're going we're gonna to bail people out of jail that were looting. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? They're going to bail people out of jail for looting. They want to give them water so they can keep looting and keep destroying your property that you worked hard for. That's my family. That's people that I, that I was raised by. Maybe not them indirectly, but the people that are related to them. And I'm just like, are you freaking kidding me? And then what's going to happen is the police are not going to want to go and take any calls from your neighborhood because they know, they know that they're going to be mischaracterized if a an arrest doesn't go exactly the right way. And so now you will all be left to defend yourself because I wouldn't want to put my, if I had police, I would not put them in any situations where you can mischaracterize them and blame them and, and do whatever. So I would not be surprised if you see less policemen coming to your calls. Which means that I'm going to be heavily armed in some way, shape, or form. Not heavily, because I'm not looking to be like an arsenal. But I'm going to make sure I have enough firepower. So people get the point. And then what's going to happen is the police will come when there's firepower. And if someone ends up dead, they're on my property. They're in my house or on my property. I felt like I was threatened and that'll be it. No due process, right? Because there's no, you know, if I feel like my life is in jeopardy and you are on my property, no questions asked. The police will be like, okay, open and shut case. That's it. At least with the police, you have some kind of semblance of due process. It's not perfect all the time, but at least you get a chance for it. But when you have something like, where the police are going to be afraid now to take any kind of calls from you because they're afraid that you're going to be recording them and goading them into doing something. I would not put my, my police, if I was a chief, I would not put my, I would not allow my police to go out there. Oh, hell no. Knowing the climate. So, you know, I, I, I had to say all this because I'm, I'm like, holy crap, this is insanity. 
Like I was so speechless this morning when I was trying to do a video that I, I was stumbling over my words because I didn't know how I was going to process all this. It's insane. And so I just find it inauthentic that someone who is is a Caucasian fighting for somebody that is African-American and they have no idea what it's like to be in that person's shoes. Totally inauthentic, totally trendy. And whenever you uh, whenever you, you, you focus on race and you think that this president is so great because he's all about racial equality, the fact that he even mentions racial equality creates and manifest the differences. You're bringing both the yin and the yang to the table, the love and the hate, the people that love you and people that hate you. Whenever you bring that kind of thing to a, to to any kind of discussion, you are now gonna bring out people's feelings about one or the other. And so, yeah, I would say that Obama was probably the most racist president because that was his most focus. And some of you like him, but then that's what perpetuates racism. You have to realize that. So. The only way to eradicate racism and all this stuff is not to speak about it and reference yourself from that standpoint because you are more than the color of your skin. You're more than the, the hair on your head. You're more than your flat belly or your fat belly. You're more than all that. But some of you don't think enough of yourself to even give yourself that kind of opportunity to be more than your body part. When girls do Botox and they do boob jobs and they get plastic surgery and they do all these crazy things to their body, they think very, very little of themselves that that's all they have to offer is something sexual or something physical as if you were put on the market to be sold to somebody because you have a strong body part. That's what they did back in the slavery days. They put them on display and then people were touching them. See, oh yeah, how strong are their muscles? That's exactly what goes on out there. And when you reference yourself by your skin color and by your body parts and by your aesthetics, if that is the only thing you had to offer, you are going to get related to that. That's how people are going to relate to you. Some of you do not think enough of yourself. Okay? And so that's what causes racism is the fact that you don't think highly of yourself and that you only feel that that is the only thing you have to offer is your ethnicity and your body parts. And so, yeah, so whatever, whatever Antifa has in store for us, okay. Whatever Trump has in store for us, okay. I'm going to bend to whatever. I'm going to adapt. I'm still going to live. I'm not going to, I'm going to fight to save my family and myself, but I'm not fighting anything out there. That's not my fight out there. It is not my fight out there. My fight is for my own body, mind, and spirit and my house. I could give a fuck what happens out there. As long as I'm able to go to the store and get my food and and I treat my neighbors with respect and my dog and my husband are taken care of. I don't really care. I hope you all know how to survive. I hope you all figure out what it's going to take for you to be able to compete in this world. And not everything is given to you. Respect is not given. It is earned. And some of you are entitled to think that you should be given respect when you have not even earned it because you don't even think enough of yourself. So anyways... There is my passionate speech for the day. Have a good day. Bye.